What's going on guys? Sensible Prepper Live. We're going to be talking about 15 items that you need to do repairs. A lot of these, you know, you could probably figure out, but hopefully you can get some ideas to put together something that, you know, you need to do repairs with. You know, one of the things that we do now is, is you know, I need something, I run to the store, run to the hardware store, run to the big box store, pick up whatever I need. And so this is just a list of things to kind of help you to kind of organize and have tools ready, uh, supplies ready to be able to do those repairs because you may not have those supplies. Uh, I was talking to a good friend of mine that works for a major um, heating and air company, I mean nationwide. And he said the thing right now they're dealing with is supply chain issues. They cannot get, he said it's worse than it was during COVID. And so we're gonna probably see a lot of different supply chain issues in the future. And this could be something that you need on a regular basis. And when you need repairs done, typically it's something that you're getting ready to do. Uh, so first off, uh, we really do appreciate you coming. Uh, Robbie Wheaton's out today. He had something with his son, so uh, it was a good thing, but he's out. Uh, and so it's just going to be me. Uh, we do appreciate Sportsman's Guide. You get $20 off every $100 or more purchase using Sooch. And you can go straight to the Sportsman's Guide website. Uh, also, uh, Exotac. They give you a 20% off every period. <laughs> Go to the Exotac website. There is a link down below in the description. And um, I had a time getting everything together. I wanted to make sure this was a good one. We've got stuff laid out. And so we're going to have some visuals for you guys because I know how much you enjoy that rather than just talking. So, guys, you know, there's there are a lot of threats that are going on all around the world. If you just you just can open your eyes and you can see them. You know, it's not doomsday, it's just reality. And you need to be more and more prepared, more and more self-sufficient, self-reliant. And that's very important to do. And guys, especially if you live in more of an urban or even suburban area, uh, if you live out and you have property and you do things all the time, you know, you're going to have a lot of these supplies already on hand. But if you're in limited space, you know, sometimes you may not have some of these things. And I think it's vital to put it together. Uh, so the first thing we're going to talk about, which is a, a no brainer, but it's tape. And, you know, for me, I mean, I'll, we always are trying to find our duct tape. <laughs> you know, it's somewhere. Uh, where was it last? Who used it last? And duct tape is one of the biggest things. I mean, people have used duct tape for so many different repairs. It's so versatile. Uh, it's so good. I mean, it really holds things together. And if you really wrap it up, you can really hold items really tight. You can repair a number of different items. Uh, and this is just Gorilla Tape. We have standard duct tape here. You know, take your choice. There's a lot of different styles out there. But not just duct tape. I mean, masking tape is something that there are needs for that, that duct tape just won't handle. Uh, one thing that I've got here is just a repair wrap. And I'm trying to see, this is Fiber Fix. And it's more of a fiberized fix. It's actually, according to them, 100 times stronger than duct tape. Uh, and it's in a small roll. And then we have some transparent tape here that's for repair tape. Uh, and some of this stuff is specialized, guys. You know, if you're in a critical situation, it, you know, you don't care what color tape it is. You're going to use it to fix whatever you're doing. But one of the things about it, make sure that you take that tape out and you try it out and you see what it can do, the strength. But Gorilla Tape seems to be one thing that we have a lot of. In fact, here's a brand new roll that we got and it kind of protects the outside. And keep it in this configuration, just wrapped up as long as you can, because it keeps things from getting into it, especially moisture. And you want to keep that out of the sun, uh, even camouflage tape, <laughs> in which, you know, could come in handy. So different type tapes. There's so many different uses for them. Uh, we use them already on an everyday basis, but if you can't find the items you need to do some kind of repair, uh, duct tape will do it. Uh, a few years ago, I had something on my car. I was traveling and something came loose and thank goodness I had a big roll of duct tape and I was able to save what I had getting ready to come loose and hopefully not hit the car behind me. Uh, so also, well, I didn't mention this. We really appreciate Sarah Mack. She will be over uh, and is monitoring the comments. If you have any questions, feel free to go ahead at any time and just put them out. And we'll take a break uh, about once we get to about five different things that we're going to look at. And then, you know, we can answer your questions if we can answer them. Uh, OK, number two, another big one, another one that a lot of us know, a lot of us have is glue. 
Now, Gorilla Glue. I'm not sponsored by Gorilla, by the way, but they do make really good products. But glue, super glue, I mean, there are different type glues. I mean, Elmer's glue for that matter. I mean, wood glue, there's a ton of different types. And so having a few different types of glue to be able to suit different situations, because all glues are not the same. They don't suit all the same purposes. And when it comes to glue, one thing that I use a lot of is Loctite. Now, I use it on firearms and, and uh, like mounting scopes and different things like that. But Loctite will give your screws an extra bite. And so it doesn't matter what you're doing. Whether you have a lawnmower where the screw is kept coming loose, you can tighten it up with Loctite. Uh, but Loctite's great for a lot of different repairs. So it's not just for firearms and uh, obviously even for automotive. But one thing that's kind of a specialized is rock set. And once you apply this, it is what it says. It's rock set. It is hard to get loose. So if you need something that's very important to hold on to, rock set is one of those things that, you know, is just excellent. And uh, in fact, I had to order this, I had to find it because this is really something that's well known, but it was kind of difficult to find. Uh, and, you know, have yourself just a few different type glues. So few different type tapes, even regular scotch tape. There may be some things that you need to do with, with scotch tape. Maybe repair a document, maybe to keep it together. Um, you know, the one thing is, guys, is in a critical situation, it's not like you're going down to the Stone Age. Uh, we're still going to have a lot of things that we have, a lot of cares and a lot of needs. And having different type items now will help. It's not a one size fits all. And that's one of the things about glue. Uh, next is cordage. Now, you know, obviously, you know, paracord is one of the big ones. I mean, people, especially in the survival community, uh, paracord is one of those things that's so versatile. Number one, it's super strong for its size. Uh, and then you get the seven strands and you can take that and you can repair things. You can even sew with it. And so paracord is something the U.S. military uses uh, one thing I would warn you about is to make sure that you buy actual 550 cord with the seven strands. Uh, there's a lot of cordage that's out there that's paracord type style and all that kind of stuff. You really want the good cordage. And you can get this in big rolls. In fact, I have a big roll that I just have it wrapped up on. Uh, and there's a number of ways to be able to carry it. Here's a spool tool. This is my favorite way to carry paracord because it keeps it together. Uh, you know, like this, it's going to just come unfrayed. It's going to be all over the place. Uh, and so I like the spool tools to kind of keep this in one spot. And you can organize your paracord like this and just tie it up. But uh, I, I just really like the spool tool. It's for something I've had for a number of years, and I really like that. But the paracord is great. Uh, this, I believe, is actually fire cord. And so inside, there is a flammable uh, thread through here that I can light and I can use it for fire, but also I can use it for standard connecting tarps, putting up things on your vehicle, tying down things on your pack. I mean, there's so many different ways to be able to use cordage. Uh, bank line is something else. In fact, I keep bank line. It's a very thin cord. It's strong. Uh, you can get it waxed or unwaxed. A lot of survival guys, especially bushcraft, really like the bank cord. And so I like the bank cord has a lot of uses. I like it. Uh, but also just standard twine, wire. I mean, you know, there's a ton of different ways to be able to secure things. Just regular twine, ropes. Ropes are great. And having some good solid ropes, because sometimes there are things that you need that paracord just isn't going to do it. And having a rope, uh, being able to tie things down as well. Uh, and then I have something here I want to show you. This is something that um, it has a spool and it just has cordage on here. And um, this is a Atwood Rope Manufacturing Microcord Dispenser. So we have this microcord, really strong, 100-pound uh, test, so 125 feet. There's just so many different options out there. Uh, one thing, though, that I typically do when I'm at a surplus store, I'm at the gun show, wherever, flea markets, is I like debt cord. And this is just cordage that, you know, you can hook up improvised um, things <laughs> like, um, you know, traps or different kind of, you know, deadfall traps, different things like that. And of course, just using it as what it's meant for is to tie things and to secure things. And it's very strong and easy to use. And so these are really cool. There's two different colors and you can 
kind of on the spool. I love these. I have a ton of them because they're fairly inexpensive. Military surplus. And so uh, these are great uh, to be trip cords, what they are. But uh, I really like to have a collection of these set aside. And so, okay, so that gives you a lot of cordage. And guys, the sky's the limit, but having some cordage, there's no real substitute. I have done a video on using your belt, which is not necessarily on this list, but a belt can be used to tie things down to use it. Of course, then, you know, you want to make sure your pants don't fall down. Um, all right, tarps. I'm big about tarps, guys. Um, and it, we were just laughing about it. We were looking for tarps. We keep a lot of tarps, and yet I had trouble finding one. Uh, but this is just a big tarp with eyelets, and we can hook this up with a paracord. We can use it to make shelters. We can do a lot of different things. If you have damage to your home, a tarp is really vital uh, because you can cover that area and at least keep it from you know continuing to get damaged. You know, that even happens during a storm. If you have a storm in the middle of the night, and you need to, you know, and it puts a hole in your roof or something when a limb falls. I mean, a good tarp is invaluable. And again, it'll protect you from having even more repairs later on down the road. Uh, you can sleep on it. You can lay it down on the ground. There's just a ton of uses for tarps. But for repairs, there's nothing better. Plus, you can cover different items. You know, you may have an ATV. You may have a, a motorcycle or whatever. You may have some stuff that you have outside. And you can cover it with a tarp. Or you have supplies that are just out and you don't want people to see them, cover it with a tarp, and at least it keeps them from knowing exactly what's under there. Uh, heavy meal trash bags, guys, you know, I'm a big proponent of heavy meal trash bags. There's a ton of survival uses for this, but there's also a lot of repair uh, value to the, the these uh, heavy meal trash bags, or they're called contractor's bags. Uh, these are not your standard trash bags. These are used to clean up after somebody has you know, built a house or they've done repair work and they're throwing fairly heavy stuff in a bag. And they're very strong. They're very large. Uh, again, there are a bazillion uses. Uh, shelter. I mean, you can do a lot of things with it. Carry water. Uh, you can use it as a sleeping mat. There's a lot of things. But as far as repairs, this can also be used for small breaks in your house. If you have a small limb that comes down, you can actually cover it with that. Rather than a tarp, uh, you can cover things to keep them waterproof. Uh, so heavy meal trash bags, I keep one in every pack that I have. And really, it's pretty much kind of close to the tarp. The one advantage with the tarp is it's really longer lasting and you do have the eyelets. And so you can really use that on a more extended period. Now, we did a, a video on um, cowboy survival how, and doing a bedroll. And one of the things we used was a canvas tarp. And it's a big plus. They used to use those back in the Old West to keep themselves warm and to seal up and keep them out of the rain. So tarps, heavy meal trash bags, big plus, and until you can clean up after you make a big mess. So let's go to one more. We're going to go to some questions. This is a big one. Uh, and it's something that sometimes you don't really think about is shoe repair. Now, for me, typically, you know, my shoes wear out. I just buy a new pair. Uh, you know, we still have shoe repair places around, but they're not as popular as they used to be because, you know, shoes are disposable a lot of times. Uh, but one thing that I had some shoes that I really loved and the sole popped off. I mean, it just kind of came off. And I took some of this shoe goo and sealed it up and it's as good as new. And so this kind of stuff, here's another one, shoe repair. It's just a different type brand. Uh, but I have used this just recently. And so having shoe repair, guys, you want to make sure that your shoes stay intact. And it's one of the things that happened, especially back in the 1800s during the Civil War. That was a big thing where a lot of the Southern troops, because they weren't able to get resupplied, sometimes they were going barefoot. And, and even at Valley Forge in different places in the dead of winter. So you want to be able to protect your feet and definitely keeping your shoes intact are going to help. Uh, and another thing that I like to keep on hand are shoelaces. I have a number of different ones here and they're cheap. I just stock some back. Some of them are leather. Some of them are, you know, different type uh, shoelaces. And you could actually use paracord for the same thing. In fact, it's kind of nice to have that paracord wrapped around your boot and it really holds up well. But having the different type shoelaces, Great for shoe repair, 
Shugu, great to keep them together. And, you know, and two, if you need to sew, uh, which we're going to get into the sewing kit. But here is a needle and thread that you are able to sew different things with. And uh, if, we, if you have a shoe, you can actually sew with leather. And that's one of the things about this. This is a leather. It pierces leather and you can sew through it. And so having some leather repair on with your shoe uh, repair, you know, it's just really one of those things that you need to protect your feet. Okay, let's go to a few questions if we have some and we're going to continue. Uh, Ernie Andrew says, I am moving to a new place to live. I have at least three months of water and canned goods. I will eat down my supplies, move, and start fresh. Is that a good plan? And how good are the Kershaw Open Assist 8100? Uh, Kershaw makes some really excellent knives. Uh, you know, they, they do make them here in the U.S. They do have a branch uh, that makes them in China. I would prefer the American-made knives. They tend to hold up better. Uh, China is making some better knives. Their heat treating's gotten a lot better. They're moving up. It's kind of like what Japan did. You know, they had the cheap stuff and then it just progressively got better. Uh, but, you know, for me, Kershaw knives, typically I like the uh, the American made knives. And, I, and I'm not sure if that's a good one, or, you know, as far as American made or not. But Kershaw does a great job. And as far as moving, yes, you know, you definitely you don't want to haul all those supplies necessarily. Uh, but what I would do is have some supplies put back on hand a little more than you need. So when you get to where you're going, you know, you have some stuff. You still have a smaller cash, but it's not necessarily all that trouble to move everything. So I would kind of give myself a little bit of insurance, uh, whether it's water, food, whatever you're using. Um, Wacka Elfalk asks, will children's medicine last longer than expire date? I've been prepping for about six months and always have my two kids in mind when I do. And that's smart. And that's very responsible. Um, kids, uh, well, any medis medication. Uh, yes, it'll go beyond its due date. I mean, or its expiration date. Uh, and that's really the best. Uh, what happens is after the expiration, it starts to lose its potency. There are certain medications that actually change composition. So you want to make sure that, you know, that look up those medications and see what it says. Um, you know, maybe go to their website, look and see because, you know, or call poison control and talk to them. But typically most of your medicines are good well beyond the uh, best by date or the expiration date. Uh, but again, it does lose potency. So, you know, you want to kind of weigh that out because when you're talking about medications and you're talking about kids, you know, it's very important to know what you're doing and it takes a little extra time and it's a little inconvenient, but it's well worth it. Um, what is your thought on making a solar kit with car batteries and 2000 watt power converter? What do you, would you recommend for solar panels? Well, there are so many different solar panel options out there. Uh, I have a buddy of mine that buys them at Harbor Freight, and he says they work great. And he is a big prepper, and he does a lot with it. Uh, you know, you just want to have a good quality. Uh, that's the big thing. Something where the connections don't, you don't lose connections, or you have problems, or it's kind of fragile. Uh, as far as a certain brand, uh, you know, I don't know enough about solar panel brands to give you a recommendation. But definitely something that, you know, has good quality. One of the things that I like to do and really, you know, feedback is kind of one of those things where, you know, I go to the middle of the pack because typically a lot of people buy something and they don't even open the box. And they're already going, oh, this is awesome. This is great. And then you have the guys that are just negative Nancy's. I mean, I don't care what it is. They're going to down it. Still, I take that with a grain of salt, but I do look at it. But the middle of the road is typically people that have wanted to put some thought into it. Maybe they've had issues with something. So I would check that out and use that as my compass. Uh, but I think that an inverter with batteries, I mean, honestly, you need battery backups. Uh, that's where you're going to get your power. So I think that's a very wise decision. Uh, you know, I guess the one thing is, is your inverter, as long as it's good, uh, it's a good quality. Uh, and then, of course, the solar panels themselves, they're fairly simple. So I don't think that I think the inverter may be more of a, a, of a concern for me than even the panels. So do some research on your panels. And um, I think that's a great setup. Um, the prepping artist asked question, antibiotics really can't go much longer. So buying them from places like Jace Medical might not be a good idea. 
Yeah, you know, the, here's the thing. Antibiotics can be very important. I mean, they can be life-saving. And to me, um, you know, buy your antibiotics, rotate them out, and just buy them. Uh, you know, a lot of times, um, and I'm not going to necessarily recommend, but there are some people that recommend, you know, fish antibiotics and, you know, different types. They say they're made on the same line. Um, you know, but again, I'm, I'm not going to recommend it just because I'm not going to give you medical advice. But uh, antibiotics are definitely important. I think it would be very wise to be able to go ahead and just take the expense. Buy what you need. If when those start to run out, just resupply, toss the others out. And uh, one thing that we use is colloidal silver, and it's something you can make. We make it at home. We've been using it for 30 years, <laughs> and it works. And that's my testimony. I'm not saying that it's going to work for you. I'm just saying it works for us. And so colloidal silver is one of those things that is an antibiotic. Silver has antibiotic uh, properties to it. And, you know, do your research, but it's easy to make at home. We do it. And we, we do it. In fact, my wife keeps a supply of it. And we have friends that we, we give it to and, and barter around with different things. So that is one thing that can be refreshed. Will it cure all things? Ah, you know, but as far as we're concerned, uh, my daughter, and Sarah Mack, uh, she had pink eye when she was a girl, a little girl. And we went to the doctor and my wife just asked the pediatrician. She said, what do you think about colloidal silver? And he goes, well, it does have a lot of properties. He goes, let's try it. And so she used the colloidal silver and it took care of it. So, you know, we, we've had a number of things like that for our personal testimony. Again, I'm not saying it's a cure-all or it's an end-all, but it's something that is a good backup that could be very useful. And uh, it's easy to make. And you just need to make sure that what you're using for the silver is pure silver. It's not coin silver. It's actual, you know, 99.99 .99 silver. Um, and you can buy it over the counter as well. And, and it lasts a long time. Just keep it in a dark, cool place. Just keep it back in your cabinet. AI5FK Accidental Extra says, question, when, sticking um, when stocking ammunition, especially pistol ammunition, what ratio of quality hollow point to cheap full metal jacket would you keep? That's a tough one. And that's one that I've dealt with over the years. Uh, you definitely hollow points are going to be much more effective, but they're much more expensive. Um, you know, it's one of those things where it's a matter of your budget. Uh, now, for me, I look at it like this. If all I have is a full metal jacket, it'll do the job. It'll just typically go through things. It doesn't give that energy that full metal, that a jacketed hollow points or self-defense ammunition does. Uh, so, you know, to me, always buy as much of the uh, self-defense ammunition as you can. But here's the thing, as far as in a handgun, uh, you know, that's going to be a limited use self-defense option in a total grid down crazy world. You know, really, your rifle ammunition is more important, whether it's an AR-15, AK or, you know, shotgun. So I'm really heavy on buying ammunition for my rifles and my pistol and my shotguns. and I mean, obviously, I have a lot of ammunition for handgun as well. So I'm not quite as concerned because if it gets bad enough to where I'm using a lot of hollow point ammunition, then I'll probably be having my rifle on my hip or my side. So, you know, I kind of that's my philosophy about it. Uh, yes, I like to have the, the uh, hollow point ammunition. I like to have a good stock of it. And, and it's great, but it is more expensive. And really, in a situation where you're using that much, you're going to be using a rifle as well, and actually more so, unless you're James Bond. <laughs> uh, Dar asks, how would one employ a surplus bolt gun in SHTF? Well, you know, the thing is, is um, you're definitely against a, uh, with people with semi-automatics, you're at a disadvantage uh, just because of actual, you know, rate of fire. Uh, typically, though, with bolt guns, you're at a distance. Uh, you can really capitalize on that, whereas... You know, with a 5.56 or, or 7.62 by 3.9, you know, it's limited range. 5.56 will get out there uh, way past where the 7.62 by 3.9. Uh, but you can get it a distance and a bolt gun can be very effective. In fact, Jeff Cooper talks about the scout rifle setup. And it's a 308 with a bolt action with a long eye relief scope. And he said that is the ultimate survival rifle for self-defense, hunting, whatever. Uh, so, you know, there is a place for a bolt gun. 
uh, when it gets and it, and it's funny, I watch my son a lot of times he's playing call of duty or something and you know, they'll, he'll choose to have a bolt gun. And the big thing is, is when he gets up close to the enemy, he switches to his, you know, his AKA or whatever he's using, but it's definitely a more distance firearm. So you want to, if that's what you have, and I know there's a lot of state laws now that are starting to come into effect where it's going to limit you. So bolt gun has a place. It's still used by the U S military for long distance shooting and other things. So it, it's definitely a good option, but it's going to be, it's going to have some disadvantages over semi-automatics. Now, let me just give you this. If you're living like in Seattle or, or, or Washington state or even California, you know, they're limiting the mag capacities and, you know, Colorado's looking at it. I mean, it's just a big mess right now. A lever action rifle is an excellent option. They're fast. They can hold multiple rounds in the tube, like a, a 357, or and you can carry 38 in it, uh, a 44 Magnum. You can put a lot of rounds in there to give you more capability uh, than even a bolt gun. The, the one thing about a bolt gun, which has a huge advantage, again, is your distance. So you're going to have longer range. Uh, Alan B. asks, what kind of books should you have in your library? Oh, man. Um, you should have a lot. You should really have a lot. Um uh, a number of books. Now, I'll tell you one, and I mention this almost every time I get on live, is The Modern Survival Guide for the Coming Economic Collapse by Perfile. And it was written about Argentina when they went through their SHTF, which they did. It was a financial meltdown. Crime went through the roof. Things went absolutely nuts down there. And that was a first world country, guys. You know, Argentina, we think, oh, it's South America. That was a very strong culture, very much like the U.S. Uh, and that is one of the best books that I know because it goes through actual events of what happened and what to do. And it gives you a lot of tips on how to take care of it. So for foul, in fact, you can put F-E-R-F-A-L in Google and his books will come up. Uh, that is number one. Um, Going Home series. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Alas, Babylon, written back in the 1950s during the Cold War about a nuclear strike from Russia. One of the best books survival type books out there. I love that book. Uh, you know, I just read Earth Abides and that's that's a great book, again, written back in the 50s. Uh, I'm going to tell you something about some of these older books. Don't discount. Them. What I did was I looked for the top 10 survival books out there and they're different lists because you got different people putting them out, but you can find some real gems. Uh, the um, SAS Survival Guide, and, and it's the manual. It's thick. It's huge. It's got tons of information in it. Uh, there's where there are no doctors. That's a great where there are no dentists. Uh, Trump's just been talking about a book uh, with a uh, do home doctor. I just ordered it. It's great. My wife's an RN. She's been looking through it. Uh, there's just a lot of different reference material. One thing I love about the Going Home series is that it, uh, it kind of gives you practical stuff, but it also tells a story. Uh, J, uh, James Wesley Rawls Survivor Series, top notch, top notch. Um, there's just so many, there's so many, but get online, look at top 10 survival books and, and look at different ones and you'll pick out the ones that are really top notch. Okay, let's go. To, we're going to come back to some questions. We don't want to lose track of our repairs because guys, I really think this is vital. Uh, zip ties. I mean, who <laughs> we use zip ties all the time. There are so many different sizes. I mean, here we got some little tiny ones. Here we got some medium sized ones. I have some long ones. I even have some that a law enforcement friend of mine gave me that's for restraints. Be careful before you use that. You could find yourself in a lawsuit, but SHTF, it may not matter. So it may not matter. So uh, one thing about zip ties, I mean, you know what they do. There, there's so many things you can do with zip ties to make repairs, to fix things. I just used a zip tie to fix this wall that had a post and I had a fence post and I was able to zip tie that thing together for a temporary fix. And in SHTF, that may be all you get. So zip ties are huge. Flex seal. <laughs> and this is really the only product that I'm actually going to say, this is a great product. It kind of stands alone. I did a video about, about flex uh, seal and there's just so many things you can repair, fix, you can even take your backpacks or your or packs and you can seal the bottom to keep them from getting moisture. Um, there are just so many uses. People have repaired boats with these, repaired plumbing. There's so many different things that you can do with Flex Seal. So I'm just a big fan and uh, just has a lot of different uses. 
Now, with that being said, you know, you may want some sealant for plumbing. And that's one thing I don't have on here, but uh, it would kind of fall into the, uh, the glue type thing. But really, it's a little different. But you can get different things to be able to seal plumbing, even different type tapes that you can wrap around. But being able to seal plumbing, it can really cause a lot of problems if you let it go. But Flex Seal, bazillion uses, highly recommend it. And, you know, you can find it all over the place. Um, and it's just, it just sprays on. You can even get the paint kind of stuff that you can paint things with. Gives you a little more substance to it. Really allows you to, to hold things together. Okay, caulk, speaking of which, uh, caulk is a big one. Uh, I've used this. In fact, lately, I just opened this one up and used it to seal something that was that was leaking and uh, that has a hole or an opening. One thing, too, is about sealing. And, and also, with and I didn't bring it with me, but uh, the stuff that you use to, like, spray into areas, it's foam and it swells out. Uh, if you have some kind of opening that goes to the outside, or if you have a, a place that has an opening, any kind of opening to the outside, spray around that. Rats, rodents, bugs, roaches, whatever, ants can all get through there. And so you want to make sure that those areas are sealed. In fact, you want to do that now. But in a grid down type situation where you're really trying to protect your stuff, you don't want rats getting into your backpack or your sleeping bag, like my $200 sleeping bag, that we had a couple of mice get into and tore it up. And um, and that's because we had it out in the garage and left the garage door open and this dumb mice came in. So definitely seal up those areas, have those areas ready. And having some good caulk, even with a caulk gun, different things you can use, have it put back. You want to make sure that you store it right because it can harden over time. But having all kind of caulk. And guys, you know that caulk's important. So, but it's just one of those things that's on the list to put in your survival kit. Uh, okay. We have buckles, buckles, buckles. Uh, I got a hold of some packs a while back and they had some defects with them. And I just started pulling all the buckles off of them and storing them away. And, you know, having extra buckles, and you don't have to have a pack like this. But this is a great way to be able to repair different items. Uh, if your backpack, if your buckle breaks, I've had it happen. You step on it. And uh, especially if you have boots on, you step on it or something happens, you can repair that. Uh, one thing typically, though, is the buckles that are on there typically are sewn. So they have a, a place. And you may have to actually do some repair. And that's where, which we're going to get to that in just a second, having a sewing kit or something to be able to repair that. But having these plus just having straps, you can have extra straps around. Uh, just get some ballistic nylon cordage, hold on to it, put it aside. But guys, I mean, these things, this is way more than I'll ever use. But I have a prepper group. We may have other people that need them. And so we have these things stocked back. We may even want to make rifle slings. You can do a lot of different things with these and so to me this is something that i just really like to have if you have an old backpack just go ahead don't throw the pack away without cutting away those buckles and any kind of repair you know any kind of items that you can use to reclaim which let me just say this when you're doing stuff and you're, you're putting things back look for things that when that you're going to throw away the other day we had a in fact i had a big toolbox come in and it was secured to this pallet but there were these large bolts that secured it to the pallet. Well, when I was taking it off, it was a real pain in the rear, but I pulled all those bolts out and I, and it had the, um, or the, yeah, the bolts. I put the nuts back on them and I have a really nice selection of these really heavy duty bolts. If I need to repair something and it needs something that big, I've got those bolts put back. One thing about prepping too, guys, if you're not careful, you become a pack rat, but some of that is important. Just keep it organized and not just piled up. And then you'll know what you need because really having those kind of supplies put back again, you can't go to the store. And one thing I do want to mention that I don't actually have on my list is extra screws, uh, machine screws, nails, different things like that. Fasteners, uh, you know, I keep big contractor boxes of those because I use them all the time. Even now I use them for different things. And so having those uh, screws and, you know, your power, uh, power tool may be out. You may not be able to use it, but you can still 
screw that thing in there if you have to. And so for repairs, I like to have the buckles, but also a big selection of different nuts, bolts, different things like that. Just keep a good supply of them. And because right now it's just so easy just to run to the store. You know, I want to run to the store. I need something. I know I have them somewhere, but I can't find them. Uh, and that's one thing about having your stuff organized. It's very important. Uh, we're going to go to another one, and then I think we're going to go to a few comments or a few questions. Okay, this is one, though, and I'm going to have to go off screen a second. And I've talked about this one before, but this is something that's free, but something that, you know, you can find. A lot of companies, we have a company right down the street from us, and when they get finished with their pallets, they set them out and let people come get them. And we've gotten a bunch of these pallets. Uh, these are great for different things. Uh, barriers, you can actually take this and get some of your stuff up off the ground like they're used for. Or you can take these apart. Uh, we took some pallets. They were ammunition pallets. Um, I got them at a Lucky Gunner event. They were burning them. And I said, let me, I said, if you don't mind, I'll take some of those. We brought them down and built raised beds with them for our garden. Uh, there are so many different repairs that you can do with pallets. Again, they're free. And this is where those screws are going to come in handy. Uh, so pallets, free. There's different types of wood, different sizes of pallets. And so having a, a good selection. Uh, one thing I would say, too, is, is if you have a, a construction going on around your area, maybe a new subdivision is being built, go to the dumpsters. Go look in the dumpsters. They throw away all kind of wood that's been miscut or they only needed a small piece. And there's good lumber in there. And lumber has gotten extremely expensive. And so that lumber can be used for repairs. And, you know, of course, you know, you've got to got to have a place to put it. You know, if you're living in an apartment, that's going to be a little bit of a problem. But, you know, even if you had them stocked away in a storage unit, one of the things we do is we have what we call a cache. It's our storage cache. And me and one of my buddies as part of our prepper group. We share it and we put emergency supplies in that storage building. Now, yes, it could be compromised, but it's pretty secure. But if we need to and we're not at home or we can't get home, we can go by there and we can get the emergency supplies that we need. But having that is great for different things. OK, um, let's go to some, let's go to a couple of questions and then we'll uh, we'll finish up with a few more. Uh, Andres asks, once there is no trauma emergency medicine available, how do you treat serious wounds? First thing I would recommend very first is to go to a trauma class. Um, you know, we have been to a number of trauma classes uh, and guys, here's the thing about trauma is it's fairly easy to take care of if you know what you're doing. If you know a few things, one of the things when I first went to my first trauma class and it was medical gear outfitters, skinny medic, they do a fantastic class, by the way, it's worth whatever you're going to travel. People have come from all over the country to this class. Um, and, and Dietrich is a good friend of mine. Went to the class, uh, kind of did a survey because I was there to, to make some video about it. We've got a video about it. One th it medical always was a black art to me. I, I, it was black magic. I didn't know anything really about it. My wife's an RN, labor and delivery nurse for 20 years and, and, and you know, in different other places. But one of the things about it is if you go through a class, it'll give you a lot of confidence and it'll give you some knowledge to be able to take care of things. So stop the bleed. That's a big class as well. That's very important. But trauma classes, even going to the Red Cross and just getting a basic CPR class is a, is a step in the right direction. So you can have all the medical trauma kits and everything else, tourniquets, all that kind of stuff. But I highly recommend, first off, going to and, and investing in a good trauma class. It is well worth it because it may not just be you or a friend. It may be your child that needs it. So to me, it's something that's important, whether there's SHTF or not. Kids are crazy. They're outside doing stuff. Somebody can be hurt. So having that together. Also, what we do is we have a bag, a medical bag that we carry with us. And we have a lot of stuff in that bag and to treat different things. And so that is also important because, again, you're right. I mean, our medical system since COVID has really gone wacko. I mean, it, it's it's gone off the rails. And so being able to treat yourself has become more and more important. Uh, JCH74 says, good morning. What's your thoughts on the Springfield XD9 service model for SHTF? Thanks for all you do. Thank you. Springfield. Springfield's 
I mean, they're excellent guns. Uh, the XD series, XDM, excellent guns. Uh, in fact, my brother just got one of the, their 10 millimeters, uh, the compact and uh, XDM compact elite and uh, absolutely loves it. I have a number of different Springfield XDs and XDMs and they're just solid. They're solid guns. You know, they're made in Croatia, but, um, and they just do a, a fantastic job. Of course, they've been around for a long time. So highly recommend Springfield Armory. I think they make a great product, especially their, their XD series. Just make sure you get extra magazines, especially if you're, you're thinking about SHTF, you want a number of different magazines. Uh, Andy L asked question, would flex seal work as a Faraday seal on the lid of a steel garbage can? Uh, you know, I, I mean, it does take care of the, uh, the, um, it does make it uh, insulated and insulation is one thing that you want. Uh, but I can't give you a, a, I haven't even thought about that to be honest with you. Uh, the rubberized properties in it could be, uh, the one thing is, you know, it is the electromagnetic actually hits an area and got, and is conductive to metal. And then it, you know, if you have anything in there touching the metal, uh, what I would do is, is yeah, you could, you could check that and see, uh, and it may, may work just fine. And as long as you seal it up properly. Uh, one thing, though, that I have a friend of mine that is really an expert in EMP uh, in a uh, manu or actually a, a medical area. And he said that you could take mylar and write, wrap things in mylar bags and, and it'll also insulate inside of a steel container or whatever. Uh, it will kind of insulate the, the, whatever you're trying to insulate. But, um, you know, that, again, guys, listen, there's some people out there and, and I'll even include well, my friend is, is, as well. The EMP is there's a lot of theory behind what could happen. It's according to the detonation the, and how high up it is and how it affects things. Uh, it's one of those things that to me, if it happened, it would be the worst case scenario, period, except maybe just for nuclear weapons used on the, on, on the country. And so, um EMP is a very dangerous thing, but really the testing of a true EMP is very limited. The U.S. military has done a lot. And uh, so really it's where it's those rays are coming in. And that's one of the things about a Faraday cage is it doesn't penetrate those that that mesh. And it's a copper mesh. But the problem is, is a lot of the different um, impulse gamma rays are going at there's different frequencies. So. You know, it, there's a lot of speculation, but uh, to me, putting something in a something that is uh, magnetic, something that does conduct electricity and then whatever you have inside it, make sure that you well insulate it and that will go a long way. So Mylar is definitely a great one to put around. it. Uh, L. Robert Van Dyke says, any suggestions on organizing all different types of nuts, bowls, screws, etc.? Well, you know, I have these, they're, they're these cases, they're like flat, but they're, they have compartments in them. And so that's typically how I do it. Uh, I put the different bolts and nuts in those things. Uh, I know my grandpa used to use um, cans, like coffee, old coffee cans, the metal ones, you know, he'd put different things in there, but then you have this deep and you're digging through it and he's got all kinds of stuff in there. Believe me, I went through all that stuff uh, and I've still got a lot of it, but um, yeah, I like the more shallow kind of, compartmentalized plastic containers with the lid. And then that way I can put like washers, nuts, you know, different sizes and try to actually keep them separated because, you know, it's the worst thing in the world is to take a bolt and you're sitting there trying to fit it with something. Uh, but that works too. But to save time, I like to kind of keep the right sizes together. So, um, but that's the way I do it. I have these plastic containers that are just flat and they have those compartments and it does really well. And I have multiple multiples because there's so many different types. Uh, Snowman um, FL says, speaking of trauma care, how rigid are expiration dates on sealed hemostatic gauze, combat gauze, Cheeto gauze? Uh, well, you know, because of the properties of the uh, hemostatic agents that are in there, um, you know, I don't know. I think it would be one thing to look on the North American Rescue website or maybe give them a call and find out. I, I don't really know the expiration dates. I would say that, again, it goes longer than the expiration date. It may have less effect, but it's going to have some effects. Uh, and two, you've got to think about it. The U.S. military gets tons of that stuff. 
and they take it out in the field and it's out there for months for, you know, maybe in a year's or whatever. And so I, I'm not sure how stable it is, but I would suspect that it's more stable than, you know, than you would think. But again, you're going to have to do some research on that. I'm sorry. I wish I could give you the answer to that. And that's something actually that I think I need to check out. Uh, Yeti Stone asked, do you or did you have a fishing show? No, but my brother does. <laughs> my brother has a YouTube channel called Derek Space. One word, Derek Space. And he's been on the channel before, shooting some before. And then we did a thing on survival because he goes out for weeks into the Everglades by himself and camps and goes um, canoe fishing and kayak fishing. So if you want to check out Derek Space, he has a great YouTube channel, does a lot of fly fishing. And uh, really has a lot of fun. And he is a fisherman. He's been doing it all of his life. Uh, Daniel Hampton said, hey, Don, I want to start prepping and I can spend about 75 to 100 a week. What should I start with first? Two main calibers or nine millimeter and five, five, six? Well, if you're looking at, foot, you know, and it's a, if you're looking at ammo, what I like to do is I think about NATO calibers. Now, if, if I'm an AK guy, I'm going to think about 7.6, 2 by 3, 9. But uh, as, as far as for me, I, I'm a NATO caliber guy. So I, I stock up on my nine millimeter, my 223 and 308 and shotgun rounds, different type shotgun rounds. Those are my main ones. Uh, I have other calibers, other ammo, 45, 10 millimeter, blah, blah, blah. but, you know, that is not priority when it comes to survival. That's just for, for whatever I want to do. But I would highly recommend picking one caliber for handgun, one caliber for your rifle, go-to rifle, and then long-range rifle. And, um, you know, here's the thing. When I was, and this is before YouTube, you know, when we had we had the Clinton assault weapons ban, and one of the things that I did was I would go to the store, wherever it was, and I would buy a box of ammo every week. One box, I'd buy some 22, and I'd just try to do that. Uh, and then just before long, and you'll be surprised, it's it kind of really starts to stock up. Uh, then I started my YouTube channel. I blew through most of it at first until I got an ammo sponsor. But that is a good I mean, that's a nice amount of money to put toward ammunition. So I would definitely stick with those calibers. Twenty two is another big one. Twenty two long rifle. It's fairly cheap. So just kind of coordinate and figure out the best way. But I'm going to tell you, it won't take long. But guys, let me just say this since we're talking about ammunition. Right now, the prices are coming down. That could change in a heartbeat. We've been through it eight times where ammunition just disappeared off the shelves and the prices went through the roof. Buy your ammunition now. Just, just a warning. Because what's going to happen is in a few months or maybe next week, something happens, ammunition dries up, and everybody's complaining to me about how much ammunition I have. And I'm like, well, too bad. You should have st stocked up yourself. So, guys, that is one thing that you definitely need to put back. Okay, let's go ahead and finish up what we have. Um, we stopped at pallets. We're going to go to sewing kits. Sewing kits, I mean, you can get these little baby sewing kits like this. And even in a hotel we were in a while back, they had a little sewing kit. I picked it up. I paid for the room so I could get it. But, uh, you know, one thing we have are these little sewing kits like this. And we have everything, thread buttons lots of buttons you need to put that away and we're a little bit redundant so we got a bigger sewing kit <laughs> so i think one of these my wife inherited from her grandmother but in here we have thread we have all kind of different thimbles pins all that stuff sewing kits very important uh but one thing i will show you if i can find it here it is this is the um what is this? The Rip Spool <laughs> by Exotac. And this has some, uh, it's um, Kevlar thread. Kevlar thread wrapped around it. We have duct tape wrapped around the body, which is a considerable amount. And then inside we have a sail needle. This is for sails. It's a really heavy duty needle. And it has a little protector here that goes in to protect the tip and keep you from, <laughs> protect yourself. And uh, these are great. I love these. And then it has a little lanyard on the end. It's made from aluminum. I mean, these things are just fantastic. Uh, and this is from Exotac. So you get 20% off going to exotac.com. Again, there's a link down below in the description. They also make some of the best fire starters on the market. But definitely repair-wise. And I did show you my leather tool here. 
These are great. Uh, in fact, I started working in some leather, just kind of playing around and bought a number of tools to be able to use for leather, which could be a repair option for, for sure. Okay, so repair tools like that. I mean, sewing kits, definitely a big one. Again, lots of buttons. You have buttons on your shirt missing, you want to be able to fix it. And this is something that's kind of unique. Um, this is called the Stronghold. It's a haywire clamper. You can wrap even pallets with, with cases on them. You can wrap it with this, tighten it down, and it holds it secure. You know, you don't know what you might need for this kind of stuff. I mean, this is something that's a little bit over the top, but definitely in a bug out situation or something you're trying to get tied down, bungee cords, obviously, or something else, but that's not really for repair, but it can be used for repair, especially if you have tarps, and you, <clears throat> excuse me, and you want to bungee it together. Insulation strips. Now, this is something that's kind of like, eh, but uh, having insulation strips, this just comes off. You can insulate doors if you have problems or issues with air coming in, especially in a wintertime situation where there's no heat and you want to seal things up, seal up your windows, things like that. Having insulation. Um, you know, one thing is in my shop that I have here, uh, we just finished building this thing out. We insulated it, put in sheetrock, did a bunch of stuff. The shop that I was in before was halfway insulated and it was blazing hot in the summer, freezing cold in the winter. And so making sure that you have insulation, obviously in your house, you should. But then having ways in case you have any kind of draft or anything, you can seal those up, especially around doors. I mean, for us, we have the double pane windows and all that stuff. But when it comes to certain areas, sometimes there are places where air is coming through. And so having just insulation strips. Um Number 14, now this is a big one, and this is something that we all should have, but, you know, lubrication. Three-in-one oil, WD-40. Here's some WD-40 with its uh, penetration um, oil, which is important. Did I bring, well, I guess that is what I brought. Oh, and here we have red and tacky grease. Uh, having some grease, and of course, automotive, you can get all different types of grease, but guys, being able to keep your stuff maintained is going to keep you from having even more extensive repairs. But sometimes you have, you know, a bolt or something that's stuck, that's lodged and seized. You know, you can take and use this stuff to keep your items free and keep them going. And so lubricants, especially if you have a vehicle, you want to make sure that you keep it lubricated. And there's a lot of different types of these. Uh, and some of them are just incredible. Uh, one thing that I do have, which isn't really a lubricant, but it's gooby gone. And you can pour it on something and get, you know, messes off of them if you have things. And that's not really repairs, but yet it keeps it maintained. And guys, all this stuff is good for maintenance. Now, one thing I do want to say, though, about this kind of stuff is don't use WD-40 on your firearm. Uh, it's not really, uh, this one has silicone on it, maybe a little better, but WD-40 is too thin. You really need something a little more heavy duty and make sure that you have some, some oils, cleaning good gun oil for your firearms. Uh, but one thing about the grease is you can use it on the slide rails and you can use it in certain places. And this works really well for even firearm maintenance and keeping things going. One thing that I like to do in my AR-15, and you guys, most of you should know this, but if you have an AR-15 and you have that buffer spring in the back and when you shoot it, it goes boing, boing. You can take some of this red and tacky grease and coat that spring and put it in. And it's amazing how quiet it'll be compared to that springy noise. And so definitely a pro tip. <laughs> and just having uh, tools, tools for repair like this, uh, different type tools for repair, hammers, your regular tools, your screwdrivers, uh, you know, all the different things that you have. Just make sure that you have those tools and you have a good toolbox stocked up, ready to go. Now, here's the caveat. Just because we have an SHDF situation doesn't mean you don't have power. I know that's what happened with COVID. I mean, that was in a crazy situation, kind of an SHTF light, but it was. And one of the things, we had internet, we had power, we had water, we had everything we needed, except we couldn't go out anywhere. And so don't always, and two, you know, the ammunition dried up because people went, you know, they thought, man, people are going to be trying to get food and it's going to be riots. And that just never materialized. So having things like this, sometimes it doesn't mean that you're not going to have your cordless drill to be able to use it. It doesn't mean you're not going to have things that you can do. 
So take that into consideration. Don't just get rid of things that are dependent on power because you may have it. One thing that I've got is a core, a, a, a hand uh, grinder and I can sharpen tools on it, which is another thing to have. But I can just use it. And man, that thing just starts to spin. The more you turn it, it just gets those gears going and it will fly. So having different type of tools that are mechanical in nature and not electronic and don't depend on electricity. Those are also old timey, old fashioned tools, which I just like. I like them. I, I collect them. And uh, I go through periods where I do. OK, let's see. We got a couple of questions. We'll try to get to them. We're good. Oh, we're good. You guys are quiet today. Well, OK. And thanks for the questions that we did have. We really do appreciate it. Uh, guys, I hope you it put some thoughts into you about building a repair kit, putting your repair items in one place or knowing where they are and keeping a good supply. It's the, one of the reasons why I have three rolls of this uh, Gorilla Tape is because we try to keep it around and have an extra supply of it because we always need it and we never can find it if we do need it. <laughs> so we keep extras. Uh, but, you know, just basic things that you think, man, I can just run up the store and grab that. Have some of that put back because that can really save you in a grid down situation where it may be too dangerous to go out or maybe the stores are closed. I know some people, and you may even be watching this video, you live in areas where the stores have been ransacked from just these flash mobs and the business is just closed down and that can happen anywhere. So make sure you have your stuff together, have your tools together. And um, guys, the thing is, is you can have a night, like I have a nice supply here of stuff that can do a lot and it really wasn't all that expensive. So, you know, it's not like you're going out and breaking the bank. This is something that anyone can do. You can put it together. Uh, you know, you don't need, six of these <laughs> you probably only need one but uh you can keep that together keep your paracord uh it'll just give you a lot of options and when things go south you're going to be in better shape so with that being said we really appreciate sportsman's guide for sponsoring today's episode you get a hundred dollars off every no you get <laughs> sorry you get twenty dollars off every hundred dollar or more purchase using such just such no zero zero and you can just go to the Sportsman's Guide website, put that in the coupon code. Also, uh, Exotac. And guys, best fire starters out there, period, made in Georgia. And this uh, rip spool is fantastic. These are these get bought up pretty quick. So if you find them, I would highly recommend having them. Just a great tool for repair, but also their fire starters are fantastic. And also, we appreciate Sarah Mack for being over there and monitoring questions and bringing them to me. And uh, again, we really appreciate you guys for showing up today and be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic.